Peter Greenlaw here. I'm the founder of the New Health Conversation, which I think we sorely need. I also discovered the TDOS syndrome, which stands for toxicity, nutritional deficiency, being overweight, and stress. And all those four come together to undermine any strategy we have to maximize our quality of life potential, contain our weight, et cetera. Every person in the world suffers from TDOS syndrome. They don't even know it. Both the TDOS syndrome and the New Health Conversation are registered trademarks, U.S. patent office. I've written four best selling books, all with medical doctors. I've done 1,500 lectures all over the world. And for the last 20 years, I've worked with some of the top people in medicine, oncology, molecular biology, genetics, and nutraceutical chemistry. And let me say right away, I am not the expert but I became an expert on the experts. Imagine hanging out with them, these world-class experts that for almost two decades before I even met them, they were looking, was there the possibility they could find the silver bullet for our health and control the epidemic, which has now turned into a pandemic of obesity. As we, as you hear this today, about 80% of America is overweight and 50% are obese of the 80%. That's estimated. One in three adults are pre-diabetic. 92.3% of the population by the CDC is considered metabolic and healthy with three of these five factors, overweight, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, high triglycerides. Something's terribly wrong. Today, what I want to talk to you about is sugar. Now, the one thing I will assure you about the new health conversation, we're going to bring you the absolute scientific facts. Nothing that's our opinion, because my opinion doesn't matter. I'm not the expert, but I became an expert on the experts as they taught me this and led me down these paths to see what was really going on. So I want to read to you from the latest um, information that was a study actually done by uh, Mount, Mount Sinai School of Medicine. So listen to the headline. A junk food addiction is a lot more is a lot more like a drug addiction than researchers previously thought. They now claim sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. What? Sure, it's eight times more addictive than cocaine. They go on to say, Dr. Nicole Avina of the Eichen School of Medicine at Mount Sinai tells the Huffington Post that pizza is the most addictive food by far due to the hidden sugar you'll find in just one slice. The tomato sauce on the pizza, for example, can have more sugar than a few Oreos. Remember, I'm only giving you what they're saying. I'm not making an opinion on this. I'm just making you aware of what the research says. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm not disparaging pizza in any way. I'm just telling you what the research has said. Other extremely addictive foods are chips, cookies, and ice cream. Cucumbers are the least addictive food, followed by carrots and beans. Dr. Vina found behaviors and attitudes towards some foods closely uh, mirror addiction patterns. The most addictive foods are the ones with which are high on the glycemic index. Several studies really do suggest that highly palatable, highly processed food can produce behaviors and changes in the brain that one would use to diagnose an addiction like drugs and alcohol, Vina says. Cardiologist James O'Keefe says sugar contributes to cardiovascular disease as well as liver disease, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and Alzheimer's disease. Wow. That is totally crazy. Do you wonder why you have a problem going on a diet? Do you wonder why? Um, and I can tell you, again, this is just the research. So Michael Moss wrote a book called Salt, Sugar, and Fat. He's a New York Times Pulitzer uh, Prize winning author. He literally uh, tracked the food companies for almost 10 years and got them to admit they've spent something like a billion dollars to create the bliss point, bliss point. Well, that's the point where sugar, salt, and fat are just the right combination to excite you. Because see, nature's smart. Food has to be pleasurable or we would starve to death, okay? So- but if you can get the pleasure going, but not fill you up, then guess what? Nobody can eat just one. I mean, do we really need 44 ounce, 64 ounce big gulps? I don't, I don't know. But apparently some people think they do. You have, I mean, they're telling you sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. So the key is <laughs> if you understand that, then you want to be, you want to find a, a, a protocol or a program where it will cut down on your sugar cravings dramatically. See, everything is always about moderation, right? But sugar being eight times more, more addictive than cocaine. And you wonder why people are overweight. You wonder why people can't stop eating. You wonder why people crave junk food. Well, the good news is the researchers for, for almost 40 years, up until six months ago, they finally found the magic bullet. According to them, three new published peer-reviewed studies, one of the most striking examples in the studies were, it was 80% women, 20% men, no one was allowed to exercise, okay? They found at the end of 30 days on this, hunger and cravings went down by 41%. It's not a diet. 
It's a revolutionary new concept called R2M protocol, which is based on intermittent nutritional fasting, not intermittent fasting, and something called protein pacing. And people basically lost their cravings or the, the greater part of their cravings in just the first 30 days. In, in an eight-week study using the same protocols, they saw unbelievable things like inflammation went down 25%. Uh, there was a 33% reduction in the visceral fat. That's the fat around your uh, internal organs where the body stores chemicals. Now it's starting to make sense why 80% of Americans are overweight and 50% of those people are obese. They literally were so addictive to food. We didn't, we didn't control that. We're not, we're not in control of what they put in the food. So at a minimum, I would think you might want to start to read your labels and look at how much sugar is in. I didn't know that. I love pizza. I mean, I do I really like it? But I didn't understand that, you know, there's that much sugar in pizza or even in the tomato paste on top. So I, I think just being diligent, just making you aware, that's the whole point behind the new health conversation is to make you aware. Here's, here's what we're seeing in the science. And here, finally, after all this time, three peer-reviewed published medical studies proving there's a way out of this. There's an exit ramp. And you can do any diet you want. But the problem with diets is that when you lower the calories, which is pretty much what they all do, you also lower nutrition. And when your body is so used to running on sugar and simple carbs, guess what it begins to crave? Sugar and simple carbs. But ahead of that, because of the lack of nutrition, your body's going to go and seek the nutrition. It needs, because it runs on nutrition. It doesn't run on calories. It doesn't care about calories. It only cares about nutrition. When you lower the nutrition, the body will go and seek the nutrition. And, and the most nutrient dense part of the body is in the muscle. It literally eats the muscle, slows the metabolism down. When you come off the diet, you gain all the weight back. I mean, I hope this makes sense to you, but there's a tip right there. Just try and avoid sugar as much as you possibly can. Oh, and by the way, artificial sweeteners, they now say are really, they're harmful, but they're like 500 times sweeter than sugar. No wonder people like, you know, diet sodas. I'm not going to make any judgment. I'm just relying on the science. You make your own decision. And I encourage you, go to our website, r the number 2 mprotocolcom r the number 2 mprotocolcom and see the scientific analysis with the breakdown of all the things they saw in the clinical studies and make up your own mind. Hopefully you'll reach out to us and we can talk about a protocol that you can consider doing if you want, but not until you've had a chance to really uh, scrutinize the, um, the medical evidence that's there. So I hope this has been helpful for you and uh, I hope that we'll hear from you. But wow, this sugar thing, it, it, even, it, it even blows me away, okay?